ASP is back again for more Marine Corps equipment, belongings, uniforms, etc. And here, what is this? What's this, Joe? These are entrenching tools and covers. One of my favorite things to collect. Um, this is a World War II, I'm sorry, World War I, World War I. M 1910 entrenching tool, or mm -hmm. E tool, or T handle shovel. We refer to it as T handle entrenching tools. Mm -hmm. We can see a U.S. stamped into the steel here. Alright, that's the only markings on it. Okay. No, it's not painted. Alright. Clearly not World War II. Oh, there's a US on in wood. Okay. Alright. It's rusted, but it's actually in good shape. Alright. This is a Marine Corps depot made E tool cover. Mm -hmm. We can always tell by the brass buckle. Yeah, by the brass buckle. Okay. No US. This is sort of that early World War I pea green Marine Corps hook, and we can see in the early ones there was actually a brass roller in there. All right, that's odd. All right, the roller. Usually it's just they sew a loop and they put the wire through it. Mm -hmm. All right. So again, this is, a, this is this is not a specific Marine Corps shovel, but the cover definitely is. Okay. All right. Now this is a. Again, a 19, M1910 T-handle entrenching tool, but if you notice, it's a lot shorter. Yeah. Okay? It was not manufactured that way. This is a paratrooper piece. Paratroopers would cut them down, and you can see the handle's loose from being built, taken apart, rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Okay? There's still a little bit of the original green paint still on it. Okay? Now, I, I'm not, I do not know if this is specifically issued to a paramarine. This very well could have been somebody in the 101st Airborne in Europe, mm -hmm. but it's still a parachutist style ETOL. They cut them down. Mm -hmm. Now, this cover is a specific paramarine piece. It was reversible camouflage. What you did was you simply unbuttoned it from this side and put it there. Ah. And then it was reversible. Okay. Okay. The paramarines. Then it was padded, and there's no wire hook. Yeah, how do they, um, how do you hook it to your belt? Oh, with that? Right. Okay. So you didn't wear it on your back, you wore it on your, well. on your belt, on your hip. And being as padded with no hook, it worked quite well. Okay. You see? Yeah. And again, the longer ones, no good. You know, you yeah. know when you're jumping, you know, rough landing and all, so these worked very well in that capacity. It had a strap, it was a simple strap, you snapped it in. There's no markings on it, nothing. These were sort of rigor made for the Paramarine Regiment. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty rare pieces. Uh, it, it, to me, it's only storage dirt on this side. I doubt it was ever issued, or issued anyone to a combat at least. And it's padded. All right, now again, the para, this is a Paramarine cover, but not necessarily a Paramarine E-Tool. It could have been a U.S. Army Airborne yeah. E-Tool. No markings on it? No. Just a U.S. Okay. See a little bit of green paint left? Yeah. Again, a U.S. on a wood would have been in here somewhere. But it was taken apart, cut down, re back together, yeah, and shortened could, for paratroopers. You can tell by the cut right over right, here. Right, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, got, I bought these together. Mm-hmm. But as a collector, it doesn't mean they've always been together. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't go by that. Okay? Now, this is probably my rarest of all my E-tools. Both these pieces are specific World War II Marine Corps. Okay. All right? The E-tool, right around 1941, when the Marines re, re, uh, started rebuilding everything else, they also built their own shovels. You can tell. First of all, it has sort of that forest green paint to it, instead of sort of the Army Olive Drab. Yeah. There are no U.S. markings on it, and it has this welded plate, re reinforcement plate on it. That plate's how you tell a Marine Corps shovel from an Army one. All right. Hmm. So, so it's riveted. If we take this one here to compare it, right? At least there you go. That's a perfect example. Okay. So this is basically reinforces. Right. Exactly. All right. Okay. Now this is extremely rare. 
Um, it was made by the Boynton Manufacturing Company, 1942. See how the see the Boynton yeah. mark? See how it's different? Yeah. That's what I was talking about in an early video. Yeah. Boynton, the O and the Y is smaller, so 42 squared within it. So this is an early piece. We see the angled Marine Corps hook. Again, frog skin, not reversible. One of the very, very few camouflage pieces that's not reversible. Mm -hmm. um, there was only one contract of them, so you're not going to find them dated Boyd 43. And the only photographs, there's a lot of photographs of these covers. The only photographs you see of them is on Cape Clouster in New Britain and Peleliu, both islands invaded by the 1st Division. So my guess is these were issued out in not complete division numbers, but handed out to members of the 1st Marine Corps Division. They fought on Cape Clouster. Mm -hmm. Any E tools and the Marine who was issued them, who survived Cape Clouster and went on to Peleliu, you probably saw them again. Yeah. These are really rare, really hard to find. We see the brass buckle, which is odd because it's actually a Boyd piece, mm -hmm. but it has a brass Marine Corps buckle on it. What's on the other side over here on the entrenching tool? Any markings or nope, anything like nope. that? Nope, It's Marine Corps. They don't mark them. Okay. Now here's a much better variation between the Marine Corps one and the Army one. Here is an Army one. See, see the color difference in the green, well, the yellow drab, than the forest green? Yeah. Okay. And here we see the, count, the manufacturer's label on it. Ames, 1942. Let me see the light. Yeah, Ames, 1942. Yeah, they, were, they made a lot of shovels. So there's the main difference. Early war manufacturing of the Marine Corps one and the Army one. All right. And here is an Army cover. We can still see the U.S. under it. But, again, we see the 4th Marine Division, 24th uh, Rifle Regiment, he was a private. Mm -hmm. Okay, we see the Boyd, not Boyd, but the non-depot made buckles. Yeah. There's a manufacturer stamp, W.L. Dumas, Manufacturing Company, 1943. Here's the cool thing about this piece. We can see where the, the hook was originally sewn on. Yeah. It was moved down here. It's a lot more comfortable with the hook at the bottom. It, it hangs higher on your back. Mm -hmm. All right. Now this is another pretty rare and specific Marine Corps e-tool. Late in the war, the Army started going to a folding style e-tool, which we'll show you in a minute, but the Marines still had a surplus of this type of cover. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to change, have to buy all new covers for new e-tools. So they simply had the folding e-tools that were coming out in a fixed pattern. So this is, and we can see the manufacturer, it's late war. EMP Co. Our company, 1945. So that marine forest green again. Um, I've definitely seen photographs of these e-tools on Iwo Jima. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You can clearly see, you know, this cover on the back of their haversacks and no T-handle. You see a rounded off, you know, bottom on it, you know? So this is sort of like what they call the modified 1943 e-tool. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, the, um, the field applied camo. Yeah. Right? And what's left of the manufacturing stamp. And if we look, these two were manufactured by the same company. That WL... To this manufacturing company, mm -hmm. so we can see where they were, the hook originally was, and somebody moved it. Okay. All right. Here's just another another one. This is the same shovel. Another 25th Marine Regiment, Fourth Division. Mm -hmm. Yet another manufacturing stamp, 42 Bartlett, something. Barkley. Yeah. 1942. Actually, the variation of those two there. Now, this is the folding e-tool. This is the M1943 folding and trenching tool. All right. Uh, usually, when they designate something with a year on it, you mm -hmm. rarely find anything actually manufactured in that first year. 
This happens to be one of them. This is in great shape. You don't start seeing these till Iwo Jima. And even they're not a lot of them, but you do. And that was it. We see the manufacturing. Wood, 1943. Okay. Now, the Marines did not contract these out. They got all of these from Army Supply. There are no specific Marine Corps ones. Okay. All right. And even here, we see this is marked. What is that? The Victory Canvas Company, 1943. Mm hmm. You see the U.S. on the front. All right, and we see a fixed hook on the back at the top. All right. Now this one, again, we know this one was issued to a Marine. We see the invasion markings on it. The 23rd Infantry Regiment, a sergeant. Although, you know what? I think I see a double set of invasion markings in there. Mm -hmm. It might have been issued twice, and maybe that's the, the regiment number from the first stamping on this. You know, so maybe that wasn't to a sergeant. Hard to tell. But what they did was they made an improvement on these. They made the hook adjust adjustable. You could move it. Ah, yeah, that makes it right? a lot easier. And we see the Marine's name at the bottom. D.W. Burton. So this gives the Marine right. easier... Well, all soldier. Yeah, yeah all right. soldier, yeah. It's so easy to uh, carry so this. They made it adjustable. Yeah. Instead of having to do what they did on the old ones, and actually unsewing it and sewing it back on. Yeah. They actually moved it. Give them more options, basically. Yeah. All right, now this is also an entrenching tool, but it is not a shovel. This is what's called a pick mattox. And it's, it's a pick mat. It's a pickaxe. And it all folded up tight into here. We see the brass buckle. If this was Army, it'd be a great big U.S. stamp right there. Mm -hmm. Right? And it broke down into three pieces. The carrier, the handle, and the pick. And you just slid it in. And there you go. We see U.S. stamp on it there. Let me see. I'm trying to get a focus on it. Okay. And we can see it's in that olive drab color. Mm -hmm. The Marines did not contract these out separately. Now, in a, in a fire team, a fire team is four men. Yeah. One of every four men in a fire team had a BAR. Okay. One in every four men did not get an entrenching tool. They got a pickmatix. And I wondered if there was any correlation between the two. I don't know if it was official or not, but I definitely find lots of photographs of BAR men with pickmatixes on their shelter on their haversacks and not entrenching tools. Mm. So I'm thinking maybe they, you know, count to four once instead of twice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And some men would be actually issued an axe. It's just a small hand axe. That's all it is. A depot made pouch, you know, small pouch for it with a snap on it. I don't know who would have put it here or not, but there's a small 1941 there. See it? Yeah, I see it. And there's a USMC on it. Right. I see it, but am I upside down? See it? Hold on. Yeah, I see it. So, that's an odd marking. Mm -hmm. You know, but it is marked. USMC in 1941. And again, it would attach the same place that the regular E tools were in the back of the haversack. And those are my e tools. Yeah. It's a neat collection. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things to collect. I enjoy the e tools, especially the Marine Corps covers. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, some of these <coughs> tools can be used as uh, weapons. Uh, I wouldn't want to get over the hit over the head with it. So, yeah, absolutely. All right. All right, so off to the next Marine Corps. Equipment, belongings, uniforms, packs, etc. So stay tuned, guys.